Hi friends, it's Peggy Noe from PrettyPaperCards.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and I'm here today to show you three different ways to create a stamped image. Or in my case today, we're going to create a stamped flower. And this is the one I ended up using. This is the card I used it on. And I've created a flower, and I'm going to show you exactly how to get that look. And that is one of the looks. The other two looks are this one and this one. And they all three use the same ink. The difference is the kind of paper that you use and what you do with the paper. So let's get started. The flower we're using today is from the brand new Tasteful Touches stamp set. It's a cling stamp set. And it's this flower right down here. It has a lot of shading already in it from the stamp itself, so it makes it easy for our purposes. And the three different papers that you can use to create these different looks are, first of all, Whisper White cardstock. You could also use our Stampin' Up! Fluid 100 watercolor paper, or you could use our Stampin' Up! Shimmery White paper. Now let me show you what I mean. We'll start with the first one. And I've used throughout um, the Mary Merlot water-based dye ink from Stampin' Up. So for this, these images, I used number one on our list, Whisper White cardstock, and I stamped the stamp, here it is, on a clear block, and I stamped it in Mary Merlot ink. And this is what it, the image, it, the images it produced. I did fussy cut them to show to show you a little bit closer up. So that's Whisper White cardstock with Mary Merlot ink and just stamping the image. But you can see all the shading in there. Okay, let's look at the next one. This is what we got when I used Fluid 100 watercolor paper, and this is a thick paper. I'll put it up to the camera so you can see it. It's bumpity and it's quite thick, so it really handles the water. And what I did is I stamped my image with Versamark Watermark Stamp Pad. This is kind of a clear ink, and then I heat embossed it with Whisper White Stamp and Emboss Powder and used my heat tool on it. After that, I went back in with Mary Merlot ink and an aqua painter. And I'll show you how I did it. I got some ink on the top of the ink pad. And how I did that is you just press right here. You have to press kind of hard. And then open your ink pad. And there, do you see I got that um, ink in there. And then I used that as a palette with my aqua painter. And I painted over the embossed image and the in the blank spaces that's what was left that's what you see it turned out to be kind of a light pink but that is using fluid 100 watercolor paper with um, watercoloring watercoloring with an aqua painter now the third way to do it is the way that I did it here and I'm going to show this to you in detail now and that is using shimmery white paper and the Mary Merlot ink and the aqua painter. So let's get started. <clears throat> so here I have a piece of the Whisper uh, shimmery white paper. And I'm going to hold it up and see. Can you see those little sparkles in it? This is a paper that works well for watercoloring and for regular stamping. And I like it when I'm doing light watercoloring. It receives the water well, but not a ton of water. So I'm going to use that today. Now I'm going to stamp with my Mary Merlot ink. I'm going to stamp this beautiful flower. I just love this flower. I'm going to do two, just so you can see more about how it works. There's one. And here's the other one. Isn't that just such a beautiful image? I love it. So now I'm going to go back with my aqua painter and very little water. 
when you're really watercoloring, when I did the previous one that I showed you on the watercolor paper, I really squeezed out water. But for this, I'm not going to squeeze out water at all. I'm just going to use the water that's on the tip of the aqua painter and pull the color out. And you can see how that works. It just pulls the color. The water blends with the ink and pulls it along. And because it's the shimmery white paper that's made for water coloring, it works with the water. Um, if you did this on regular cardstock, it would not come out as well. And then if I need to, I can add just the, I'm squeezing just a tiny bit. There you go. We can see a little more water, but I don't like to use much water on these because it will blend it too much. So I'm just pulling the ink and really basically kind of just moving it around in there to get the ink to pull off of the you know, off of the way it was stamped and just add a light color to the rest of the petals. Can you see that? Let's go on this one here. And isn't that pretty? It's, it's a soft look. Now I'm going to turn it around and we'll do the other one. Pull it over here. Hopefully you can see it a little bit better. There we go. Just pull. I just go over it very non-methodically really. I just try not to go outside the lines even though we're gonna f I would fussy cut it afterward. I'm not gonna do that on the camera today but I would fussy cut after. So there we have our flower. Now what I'm gonna do for the sake of our video is I'm going to hit it with the heat gun and dry it a little bit so I can show you what else I did. So this is our Stampin' Up! heat gun, heat tool. I'm going to do the front and the back. Okay, that should be pretty dry. So there's our front and back. Now you can see the one where I squeezed the water came out a little less distinctive, right? A little, you can, it's a little more mushed in there. And that is what additional water will do. But it's okay. I think we'll, you won't notice it when we get it all together. Now the, the last thing I'm gonna do is use the Stampin' Right marker in basic black. And I'm gonna use the pointed kind of pen end. And I'm gonna add black dots in here where it would normally be the center of the plants, the little center of the flower, the little, um, you know, I'm just not a flower techie, so I don't know if it's, I don't know what it is. So anyway, I'm just gonna add these little, kind of in a sunflower, you would see the little black dots. And I think it, I think it just adds something, it gives a little more uh, dimension to the flower. And, Aren't those pretty? Didn't those come out nice? So that is the third way you can do it. So to go over three different ways you can stamp an image, and there are even more ways. You can do stamping off, you can do all kinds of things. But the ways I showed you today are these three ways. The Whisper White Paper and Mary Merlot Ink, the Fluid 100 Paper and embossing, heat embossing, and then a little watercoloring with Mary Merlot ink. And then the final one that we actually did, which is um, shimmery white paper and stamping with Mary Merlot ink and then using the aqua pen to pull it around and the black marker to give the little dots. And let's look back at the card. This is the way we did it, the third way we did it, and this is how the flower came out. And I really, I like that look. Um, here is what the other looks would have been. So that would have been fine also. That's very pretty. Or we could have done the, the heat embossing, and that would have been pretty. But my preference for this card for today was using the shimmery white paper and the aqua pen. So that's your lesson on um, watercoloring and different three different ways to stamp a floral image. And this is the stamp set we use. This is coming out in the brand new 2021 Stampin' Up! Annual Catalog, 
which goes live on June 3rd, 2020, and you can get this set, or if you're a demonstrator, you can get it now, because it's a few weeks prior. And I hope you'll come back to my um, YouTube channel. I hope you'll subscribe, and I'll see you the next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.